Hello, uh, my name is Dave. There's been uh, a bunch of people asking on the iRacing forums about uh, how to use Photoshop properly, and I kind of said that I was going to make a video, and so here I am uh, making a video about how to use Photoshop and paint for iRacing. Uh, sorry if I sound a little awkward. I uh, haven't ever recorded anything like this before, and so it's a little bit awkward sitting and talking to yourself, so you might have to bear with me a little bit. Uh, hopefully through these uh, tutorials that I'm, I'm actually going to be painting a car that I'm going to be posting on the forum. Uh, this is the car that we're going to be painting. Uh, I'm not going to do any painting today. Today is just uh, the basic setup, uh, as well as developing some good workflow techniques so that you can actually do this stuff uh, fairly efficiently. and so you don't waste a lot of time uh, fuffing around with settings and moving files around and stuff when you don't have to. So this is the car that we're going to be painting. It's a relatively simple car. It's uh, Melanie Snow's car, uh, which is Madison Snow's mother. This car I picked particularly because it's a relatively simple design uh, and will let me sh be able to show off the basics uh, of Photoshop, so basic techniques such as using the pen. Uh, things like that and so at the end we're gonna have uh, a nice rough painted up that looks exactly like this uh, but we're not doing any painting today so I'm just gonna close that stuff down so before you do anything the first thing you need to do is get the templates okay so that's easy enough you go to my racing customize cars you pick the car. In this case, I'm going to be painting the rough track version. Uh, although the track, the C-Spec, and the rear wheel drive all have the same template, uh, just hit download car template. You save it, and it's going to download it and give you a zip file with the template inside. So you just extract that away. You extract that to the desktop. Okay. And you can minimize that. And so here's you have your template file. Okay. So you open it up, <clears throat> and here it is. Okay, so the first thing I do, uh, because um, this particular file, you can't save over this template file for some reason, or at least I can't, or haven't found a way. So the first thing I do is I go File, Save As, okay, I leave it as a PSD, and I rename it to car underscore and then your user ID. This is my user ID here. You put your user ID in uh, right here. This is how iRacing determines uh, which driver gets which paint scheme is using this particular system. Okay, and this is what the TGA files that you're gonna be exporting are gonna have this file name. So I rename it like this, I hit save. It's gonna give me some stuff, you just hit okay. And it puts it on my desktop there, right there. So now I can close this down and I can delete away this file. Okay. The next thing you want to do is make sure that uh, Trading Paints is not trying to grab your paint scheme that you've uploaded uh, and display that on your car. Because if you're painting, it'll constantly be rewriting that file and putting on the one you've uploaded. So you go to the Trading Paints desktop if you're using it. And this Update My Own Schemes, you click it and turn it off. And then hit OK. And that's it. Okay. Very simple. Now it's no longer... Trading Paint software is no longer going to try to look and find your particular paint scheme and copy it to the folder. Okay. The next thing I always do, uh, and this is kind of a workflow thing, is I go to uh, Documents, iRacing, uh, Paint, and then the car you want to paint. And in this case, it's the RT12 track. I open that, and you have a whole bunch of paints in here from other people that you've played with. These files, I find, get in the way a lot. So the first thing I do is I make a new folder like that, and I grab all of this crap, and I just dump it into the folder so it's out of the way, okay? And then I take my PSD file, which is the template, and I put it in there, okay? And from here, you can open it, okay? The next thing I do, uh, so you've got to go back a few folders, the iRacing folder, right, uh, is go to the renderer.ini, so this is in the Documents iRacing folder. You open this, and you go to uh, Compress Texture Cars, okay? And you turn this value, if, you, uh, if it's set to 1, you put it at 0. 
and this turns off the TGA block compression so that when you're previewing your files it actually looks good and not blocky and compressed with all weird jagged edges and artifacts on it. So you save that, oops, file save, and close it. Just don't forget to set it back to 1 when you actually race uh, because having it set like this takes up a lot of video memory. Okay, so now that that's done, the next thing I always do is I go into the sim itself, uh, I go into a test session, you pick the car you want to paint, in this case it's the track, I always go to centripetal circuit because it loads quickly and it doesn't use a lot of resources, so a lot of the resources can go into actually displaying the, the car uh, paint scheme rather than displaying the environment. Uh, and this is a little bit of a trick to make, uh, to make it just a little sharper when you're actually painting. Another trick I always use is I set the, the, the weather to a clear day with no humidity so it's nice and clear. Not necessarily the most flattering light for viewing paint schemes, but uh, definitely the most accurate so you can actually get a feel for what the colors are going to look like. Then I hit test car on track. Software will boot up. I have it set to windowed mode because uh, if it's in full screen mode, Fraps throws a little bit of uh, a temper tantrum. So you boot it up, you hit test, the car's going to sit on track for a second, and you hear my wheel spazzing out next to me. You have about two laps of fuel left. Thank you very much for that. You hit escape, exit the car, and then you hit pause. Okay, so the car's up here. This is my default uh, um, paint booth paint scheme. Okay, it's pretty plain. And remember, that's the reason that's showing is because I took all of these, uh, the, um, the paint schemes and I threw them in that folder. Okay, so now we're paused. I usually go on rear chase or chase. It doesn't really matter. You hit Control F12 to pull up the camera options, and then you set the aim type to static. Okay, from here you can press the camera button to get rid of this big window or turn it on if you like it. It's your choice. Uh, now with the camera set to static, your WASD keys act to pan and move the camera around. So the W key pans the camera forward, the S key pans the camera backwards, the A key rotates the camera left, the D key rotates the camera right. Okay. And if you want to get a little more advanced, if you hold the Alt key down, pressing the S key rotates the camera down, the W key rotates the camera up. While holding Alt, the A key ro uh, does a roll on the camera to the left, and the D key rolls the camera right. Additionally, if you hold the control key down, it can pan the camera left and right with the uh, A and D keys and pan the camera up and down with the uh, W and S keys. So you can use this to really zoom in on, on specific parts of the car that you're working with, which is a, a very useful thing if you're trying to match up one little pixel that's running from this piece to this piece. Okay. So you'll get the more you use the camera controls, the more familiar you'll get with them. Okay, so this is the basic file setup that I'm using for while I'm painting. Okay, I usually leave this open while I paint so that I can always come back here and press Control R and load up whatever, whatever uh, state that that particular file happens to be in. Okay, so I always have Photoshop open and I have iRacing open, uh, either minimized or just running in the background uh, so I can preview my files. Okay. Uh, as well as I always have um, and track. I always have the files that I'm working with in a more or less empty folder within the the iRacing directory. Okay, so that, and you'll see why in a second why I do this. It's just a workflow thing. It just makes your life a ton easier, so you don't have to constantly drag files around. Okay, uh, so first thing you always do is you turn the wireframe on which you can turn on from this turn off before exporting TGA folder. That is a suggestion. You do not have to turn this folder off before you export the TV TGA. And while I'm painting, most of the time I actually leave this folder on and visible. Uh, you can turn the wireframe on by clicking the little eye icon next to it. Okay. And this has now the wireframe on it. Okay, the re and so uh, some shortcuts you want to do if you want to develop a good workflow is a shortcut to save your file, which is Control S, just like any other Microsoft-based system. Okay, and save as like any other Microsoft-based system. Control 
Alt S, save as, okay? So from here, you wanna pick TGA, which is the format that iRacing uh, accepts for its paint schemes. You wanna remove the copy from the end, so it's car underscore your customer ID, so in this case, car 43308. Hit save, make sure it's set to 24 bits per pixel, compressed RLE, and hit okay. Okay, what this is essentially done now is save the TGA within the folder that, the, that iRacing is looking at in order to view your paint schemes. So this means if I open up the simulator again, I press Control R to refresh my paint scheme, and it loads up the paint scheme that I have currently um, currently working on. Okay, and this is why I work with these files within this folder. So I don't have to sit on the desktop, do this, and then drag the folder over or the file over into here. And then every time I need to do that in order to view it, it just increases the workflow so you can constantly be previewing what you're working on. Okay. And it's also the same reason why I remove all of these other cars from here so that when I'm saving the file like this, I select TGA. This is the only TGA in here. So I can easily just double click it and save it. Okay. Another good workflow technique is to get your uh, workspace set up nicely within Photoshop. So this is the way I have mine set up personally. You don't have to have it set up like this, but I find this makes me work most efficiently. On the left, so all of these, these things can be turned on and off from the window at the top here and through all of these presets here uh, for all of these different windows. So on the left, I have the tools, which is this guy right here. It has the move tool, marquee, uh, the magic wand, uh, which is a tool that I kind of poo all over in the forums and tell people that uh, you should never use this. That is an incorrect statement on my part. The uh, magic wand tool definitely has its uses. I think a lot of people use it wrong, or not wrong, but in a way that it doesn't work most efficiently, but I'll probably be using it through the making of this car. Uh, and you'll see how I use it and why I use it. Uh, and I think if you learn to use it properly, it can be a very functional, useful tool. Okay. Another tool that I kind of poo all over on the forums is the brush tool. Again, this tool definitely has its uses for painting. We're not going to be using it for this car. I think a lot of people use it incorrectly. They use it to paint stripes and stuff. Uh, this is not the best way to produce stripes. It has its role in, in painting mainly with the use of custom brushes and things like that uh, and stuff in which you need to actually you can use vectored brushes and things like that but again we're not going to be touching any of this this time this is a little bit more advanced at the moment but um, don't use the brush to actually paint stripes and stuff on the car it's it's not worth it it's going to be a mess and it just makes your life harder in the long run because if you want to go back and change something it's very difficult to change stuff once you've painted it with a brush, but if you use the techniques that I'm going to be showing you later, you can always go back and change things around. You can take pieces off cars that you've made you know, six months ago, use them again, tweak them around, move them, change the shapes a bit, tweak them to however you need, and you won't lose any fidelity in the process. It'll be just as clear and just as sharp as when you first made it, uh, which is not something you can really do with the brush. Another important tool here that we're going to be using a lot is the pen tool. Uh, we'll talk about this when I actually start painting, but this is a very useful tool. You're going to be using this a ton, and I'm going to be using this a ton, and if you start painting, you will be. this will be your primary way of doing it. Okay, another tool, set of tools that's really useful is the shapes tool. Excuse me. Rectangle, rounded, ellipse, uh, or circle, polygons, lines, and custom shapes. We'll be using these a lot. Okay. On the right side at the top here, I always have my navigator. Uh, this is showing you, it always shows you a preview of what you're working on and there's a red box, you can see if I zoom in. If you press Alt and roll the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out really easily. <coughs> it shows you which part of the image you're zoomed in on and if you click it and drag it, you can quickly move your selection around without having to use these sliders. So it's a very useful thing to do especially if you really need to zoom in really, really tight on something, you can easily just move yourself around with that. Uh, and it's just a simple way of moving around, increase your workflow a little bit, make your work a little bit more efficiently. Okay. 
below that I have the history list this is really useful uh, basically what the history list does is it shows you a list of everything you've done uh, in the process of painting in this particular session and if you click on any of, so of any of the uh, steps in here you can roll back time to that particular step so let's say you know I draw a couple boxes one here and one here I can use this to roll back time to how I did it but then you know maybe I kind of liked it so I can I can go back and redo all of these changes okay so this is a very useful thing to have open uh, I think everybody should have the history open because it's probably one of the most useful things that you can you can do while you're painting it lets you quickly undo things and redo them uh, with single click below that I have the colors uh, swatch <clears throat> so this <coughs> excuse me this is useful for selecting colors you can pick the uh, red green and blue shades to make colors additionally you can click on the the color itself and open up the, a more detailed version of the color picker where you can pick uh, shades like this uh, and you can change the hue like that uh, and it gives you the uh, Photoshop ID number. This is the same uh, style of number that's used in the iRacing paint booth. So if you want to color match something like a number to a, a decal box, if you draw it around here, this is the number that you'd be using. Okay. From here, you also notice that there's an eyedropper that you can use to select colors off the template. You can see it changing. If I click the blue, it shows me the blue. Uh, this is also very useful for uh, picking colors, especially if you need to pick colors off of source files in order to try to match up as close as you can uh, the color of a car with the color of the whatever car you're trying to paint. And it keeps you from actually, it gives you a starting point so you're not just guessing blind at the color. Uh, additionally, uh, you don't need to do this in order to pick the eyedropper off. If you're in the brush tool and you hold down Alt, you'll notice that it turns into an eyedropper and from here you can pick colors right off the page okay below that I have the layers channels and paths uh, so layers is the main window that we're going to be using for this particular paint scheme uh, I'll talk about it a bit more detail when I actually start painting uh, and how layers work I think most people are probably familiar with how layers work so I don't really need to go into too much detail about that next time but uh, I'll go over a quick uh, overview of how layers work. The channels, we're not going to be using the channels this time, but the channels is very useful for picking out um, particular aspects of the iRacing default paint schemes. Uh, there's a whole big thread on how you can use these channels to actually do that. Uh, I'm not going to be using this right now, but uh, maybe in the future I'll give a little bit of a tutorial on how to do this really quickly and efficiently. <clears throat> Uh, additionally, there's paths, so we're not going to be using paths for this particular paint scheme. Uh, but again, like everything else, it has its role, uh, not in this particular paint scheme, but uh, if you're doing other things like stripes and stuff, which are very thin, or tapered stripes especially, um, if uh, anyone remembers, um, oh geez, which car did I paint with that? Uh, the WeatherTech uh, late model that I painted. All of the stripes I did on that car, uh, as they tapered off, I did with the paths tool. Uh, paths are something that's a little bit more advanced, so we're not going to get into this right now. So, uh, additionally, I have brushes open here, right? The brushes and brush presets. Like, we're not going to be using that for this particular paint scheme, so I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. But I think the most important thing is that you have all of your things open in such a way where you can access all of the tools you're going to need the most. And this is really important to get things done quickly and efficiently. Uh, and when I say quickly, I'm not talking about half-assing a paint scheme, not letting match match things up and stuff like that. I'm talking about working efficiently. So it takes you less time to get things done properly and not uh, things done improperly. Okay. So uh, having said all of that, I think that's where I'm going to end this particular video. I can't think of anything else about workflow right now, but if I do happen to think of anything, I'll be sure to talk about it in the next video. Um, and so, uh, I will see you guys next time.